Hello, everyone. Quick little background about myself. Um, as was mentioned, I'm co-founder at Celestia Labs, which is a modular data availability layer. Uh, previously before that, I was doing a PhD at UCL where I was focusing on layer one scalability. And I worked on the first smart contract sharding um, research paper called Chainspace, which was later kind of spun out into a startup that was, that was acquired by Facebook. But I was the only like, team member that did not join Facebook, and I ended up working on Lazy Ledger and Celestia instead, um, which I think was a very interesting um, like alternative design to blockchains. So I'm going to talk about three main points today. Uh, the first point is we're going to actually set the record straight on what is a modular blockchain stack uh, and define it clearly and what is not, what it is not. And then we're going to give some examples of, ex of configurations of blockchain stacks. And we're going to talk about the key benefits of modular blockchains. So when Bitcoin was first proposed in 2008, um, it proposed a model where it was a monolithic blockchain where effectively the full nodes and the validators they do consensus on the chain, and they also execute the transactions in the chain. So they provide consensus and computation on the chain. And for the 10 years after Bitcoin, most blockchains followed the same model. So when Ethereum came around in 2013, it followed a very similar model to Bitcoin, except that it replaced the execution environment of Bitcoin with a, smart, with a, with a general purpose uh, smart contract environment known as the Ethereum virtual machine. But, effect, but the actual like, architecture of the blockchain was, was similar architecturally in that it was monolithic and full nodes did the same general tasks. But obviously the problem with this approach is that um, if a, a validator is effectively, and full nodes to verify the chain have to do effectively two things. The first thing is they have to check if the chain has consensus. And the second thing they have to check, they have to actually process and execute every single transaction to check that all the transactions are valid. And that obviously doesn't scale. Um, and it's quite limiting. Because obviously it doesn't scale if full nodes have to execute the entire state and, tra and transaction history of the network. But if you think about what is like the most basic blockchain you can create, like what is the most minimal layer one, if you, if you took Bitcoin or Ethereum and stripped it back to its core components, what would you get? And what is the core functions of a layer one? If you remove the execution from a layer one, what you would get is a blockchain where full nodes do two things. The first thing is consensus. They take transactions and they order them. And the second thing is that they ensure that the data of those transactions are actually available. And the reason why you, you want to ensure that the data of the transactions are available is because that's all you need to have a uh, to build an application on the blockchain to allow clients and users to know what's on the blockchain to compute the state of the application. And I, I wrote a paper about this in 2019 called Lazy Ledger, which was the former name of Celestia. Well, I proposed a paradigm for blockchains um, where the blockchain is only responsible for consensus and data availability, and all the execution happens off-chain, which I call client-side smart contracts or client-side or off-chain execution. And that's basically the same model of how roll-ups work. So for the off-chain computation, you can use a roll-up. Um, you know, ZK roll-ups were proposed in 2018, and optimistic roll-ups was proposed you know, three months after I uh, released the Lazy Ledger paper. And in a roll-up paradigm, the roll-up execution happens off-chain, but you're only using the layer one chain only for data availability and consensus, which is exactly what the Lazy Ledger um, kind of paradigm does. So in this kind of model, you're what you're effectively doing is separating consensus and execution. Um, whereas previous blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum, nodes did consensus and execution. 
In this new model, layer one nodes only do consensus and data availability, and the execution happens upper, uh, on a layer above, above the stack, um, off-chain, not on layer one, either as a roll-up or, as a, as a, or as a different kind of layer two solution. And this actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Um, so you know, in, in computers, you have this thing called the OSI model that, that proposes a modular kind of like stack for computing, where at the, mo at the bottom of the stack, you have the physical layer, which is actu the actual cables and wiring and hardware of the, of, of the um, like internet or, 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 or the network. And then if you go all the way up the stack, you get the application layer, you know, like Facebook and Google. But in between, you have all of these different layers that can be swapped out. And um, you know, I think blockchains are kind of shifting to this paradigm because it makes a lot more sense. And I'm going to talk about why. So let's talk a little bit about what are the actual layers in a modular blockchain stack once you decouple them from a monolithic blockchain. So the first layer is consensus. And consensus, the consensus layer, is simply responsible for taking arbitrary data or arbitrary messages and then providing an ordering over those messages. So a developer would submit a bunch of messages to the network. And the blockchain or the consensus layer would tell you in which order those messages are serialized. And that's at, a, at, a, at a fundamental level, that's what consensus uh, does. Then above that, you have data availability. And what data availability is trying to solve is once the kind of consensus nodes or the consensus layer has decided or determined what the ordering of those messages should be, they usually commit to that you know, as a Merkle root or any kind of other commitment. But they also need to actually tell the network what the actual data in those messages are. And because if they don't actually publish the data that they agreed on, then users and, and applications would not be able to uh, kind of know what the state of their application is, because they don't know what the transactions are in the application. And they wouldn't be able to generate things like fraud proofs in the case of, of optimistic rollup, for example. Um, so with data availability, um, there's some cool techniques you can do, for, like such as data availability sampling, which lets you verify that the entire data is available by only downloading a very small percentage of the data. Then the third layer is the execution layer. Um, and the execution layer takes the messages that have been agreed on, uh, ordered in the blockchain, and have been made available and then does some computation or processing on those messages. So in this example, um, on the board, you can see you, know, you, you take a bunch of transactions in, and those transactions might be payments. And then once you actually compute those payments, you can know what people's balances are. And in the execution layer, uh, nowadays, people typically use rollups, whether optimistic or ZK rollups. And you can prove to users, uh, the execution was done correctly by either using ZK uh, proofs or fraud proofs. The final layer, um, which uh, kind of sits in between the execution layer and the uh, consensus layer, technically, is a settlement layer. A settlement layer is basically like a special case of execution layer. Uh, it's basically an execution layer that bridges other execution layers together. So as I mentioned, you would typically prove in a roll-up whether a computation was valid using a fraud or a ZK proof. A settlement layer basically, does, basically verifies this fraud or ZK proofs um, on the settlement layer itself and provides dispute resolution on it. And that would basically allow different um, execution layers and roll-ups to, to bridge with each other and transfer assets with each other in a trust-minimized way. Now, having listed all of the kind of main components of a modular blockchain stack, like how do we define what a modular blockchain is? 
So I define a modular blockchain as a blockchain that outsources fully at least one of the four components, like it, i.e., it does not handle that component. So, so for example, like Solana wouldn't be a modular blockchain if you just added rollups to Solana, because Solana's L1 still has a smart contract environment, and its res and its validators are doing data availability consensus and execution, and they're not specialized in a specific task, and therefore it's not it's not modular. So. What is not a modular blockchain? Uh, so there's often some confusion on this. A, uh, like a blockchain that handles all the components but has a modular software design is not a modular blockchain. Uh, a modular software design can be helpful to build modular blockchains. Like we use Tendermint, uh, the ABCI construction in Tendermint um, is very helpful to build modular blockchains. But the software, like, but deploying a blockchain using a modular software uh, library does not make that blockchain modular in itself. And secondly, um, a network of blockchains where each blockchain in the network handles all the components is also not a modular blockchain. For example, Avalanche subnets are not modular blockchains because each chain in that subnet in the network handles all the components that I just described. Therefore, it's not modular. Let's go through some examples of what a modular blockchain stack could look like. Okay. So, as I mentioned, there's the these four components, data availability, consensus, settlement, and execution. So you have, mon you have monolithic blockchains, um, like Bitcoin or Ethereum as it is you know, t traditionally, where you basically have a, like a general purpose smart contract environment, and the validators and the full nodes handle all of those four components. Then you have rollups, and in rollups, um, the L1 handles the first three components, data availability, consensus, and settlement, but, the, but not execution. And the rollup itself handles the execution of chain. And then you have validiums, and validiums are basically rollups, or but they do not have on-chain data availability, or they they do not use um, like the same layer one as the settlement or consensus for data availability, and therefore they are not rollups, but more like side chains um, or validiums, as as they're termed. So this is kind of like the kind of modular design in the Ethereum space. So that has been kind of like discussed so far. But then we, there's also a more of a Celestia centric modular design or, co or configurations of the stack. So in Celestia, we're quite interested in this idea of sovereign rollups. And in a sovereign rollup, um, the sovereign rollup uses the, the L1 only for data availability and consensus. But it does not. Um, have an enshrined settlement layer. It, instead, it does its own settlement. And the reason why it's sovereign is because it can hard fork and it can upgrade without permission from, the sell from a higher execution layer. So for example, if you have an Ethereum rollup, your rollup is effectively like a baby chain to the Ethereum settlement execution layer. And you can't really hard fork it without you know, requesting without convincing the Ethereum kind of social consensus to do so. But with a sovereign rollup, because it does its own settlement, it's effectively like a, its own layer one chain. It's effectively like deploying your own layer one. You can hard fork it, and yeah, it's, it can have its own social consensus. You've also got this idea of settlement rollups. Um, a settlement rollup is basically you know, like a standard rollup, except that it only is it's only optimized not for general smart contracts or computation, but for, um, settle, for but for settling other rollups on top of it. And I think uh, Yuri is going to give a talk about this today, where with this idea of L1s, L L2s, and L3s. So, like for example, you can have an L2 that has L3s, um, but the L2 might only. Be up, might, might only be supposed to be used for settlement for other rollups, 
but you're not supposed to like post like um, host actual like applications on that rollup. And then you've also finally got this idea of a Celestium, which is basically a Validium uh, that uses Celestia for data availability. It's, it has similar, on paper, it has similar security trade-offs as a Validium, except that it has slightly higher crypto-economic guarantees because of Celestia's uh, data availability sampling and slashing. Here's a different kind of like current players in all of these different um, like stacks. Um, as you can see, there's currently a higher focus on the execution layers in this stack. And I think that makes a lot of sense because there's a lot more kind of um, innovation or divergence that can happen on the execution layer of the stack than the, the lower layers, which kind of do more of a kind of like simpler role, simpler but more imp but important role. Let's talk about some of the, the benefits of a modular blockchain stack. So first of all, um, obviously the big one, scalability. So like intuitively, modular blockchain stacks are more scalable because there's a separation of resources. And that means each node in each layer of the stack can be more specialized to a specific function. So for example, on the data availability layer, the nodes don't do any computation. They just do data availability. And that means they can optimize their resources to uh, like having high bandwidth uh, you know, resources rather than computation. And they can be specialized just on, one, on that one task. And the main benefit of this kind of comes from the resource pricing. You're separating the resource pricing for different resources on the network. Like you have different resource pricing for data than computation. And finally, uh, in a modular blockchain stack, it's quite common to use um, technologies like data availability sampling and fraud proofs or, or ZK proofs. And this is very important for scalability because the whole, um, like the whole, the, the, in order to scale blockchains, you can't just increase the throughput. You also have to increase throughput while enabling users to still gain assurances about the correctness and validity of the underlying chain. And in traditional blockchains, the only way you can do that is if the users actually re-execute every single transaction, which most users cannot do. But with technologies like data availability sampling and fraud proofs and validity proofs, it allows ordinary users to effectively be first-class citizens of the network and have almost the same level of security as a full node that is actually downloading all the transactions without having to have the same resource requirements as a full node. Secondly, flexibility is a major advantage of um, modular, modular blockchains. We can see there's a, kind of a, Cam a Cambrian explosion of different execution layers that are innovating in different ways in the Ethereum rollup space, for example. And these different, layer, this, these different execution layers have different advantages. For example, you know, Fuel's execution layer is parallelizable, for example. And this is very important because um, if you think about the history of the web, um, this, I, like before, before the cloud or virtual machines were popular, People used to just use shared web hosting providers, you know, like G DreamHost or, or you know, GeoCities, and that really limited the innovation of the web because you were limited to whatever, like execution environment or or programming languages that that host provider had on their server. But nowadays, no one uses that. Nowadays, people just deploy like virtual machines on Amazon EC2. And they effectively have their own operating system, and they can install whatever they like on it, and experiment with all kinds of different, like programming languages and, and technologies. Uh, finally, I think this is more Celestia specific, but if you think about the different layers in a blockchain stack, it's quite you know you have layer one, which is commonly known as the consensus layer, but 
Um, the consensus layer only has value because people agree that it has value. Like people agree that the current Ethereum chain or the current Bitcoin chain has value opposed, opposed, as opposed to some fork of Ethereum because people, because people have just agreed it by social consensus. You know, like if I fork Ethereum, no one's going to say that's the real Ethereum. So to define the real Ethereum, that requires you know, social consensus. And, but applications on shared smart contract platforms and smart contracts do not have that same property. Instead, they kind of um, borrow the social consensus of the layer one that they're using or the execution environment they're using. So like if you want if you have a smart contract in Ethereum, you can't fork it uh, without asking without convincing the social consensus of Ethereum. That's to some people that's a feature, but to others that's a bug. And but with sovereign rollups, you can actually uh, have your own layer one execution environment that your community can hard fork and that it therefore has its own social consensus. And I think this is a very interesting kind of model. Uh, to, to me, the whole point of blockchains is that it's basically a social coordination mechanism for uh, off-chain social decisions that have been made. I think there's kind of three main values um, from my perspective of a modular blockchain stack or blockchain or the idea of blockchain modularism in general. Firstly, users are first-class citizens of the network, thanks to technologies like data availability sampling and ZK proofs and fraud proofs. Those technologies allow users to have the same level of security as a full node or similar level of security as a full node without needing the same resource requirements and hardware as a full node. And so you're, allow you're allowing end users to actually be you know, first-class participants of the network. Secondly, I think a second important value is um, you know, this idea of uh, la layer one fighting and layer one maximalism is kind of, is kind of you know, getting old. And I think modularism is much more interesting um, than maximalism because it's not a zero-sum game. And if you allow develop developers should have the freedom to build their application how they want according to their use case. And the more, you know, the bigger, the, the, the more players there are in this modular blockchain ecosystem, um, the more value there is to be created. And finally, I think um, an important value is that if they want to, communities can choose to be sovereign um, by deploying sovereign rollups. And the main difference with that. With other with L, with deploying your own L1, is that it's much easier to deploy a sovereign rollup than it is to launch your own new, um, like layer one chain with its own consensus, and it, because you have to bootstrap, you know, a, a secure and decentralized validator set using something like proof of stake. But with sovereign rollups, communities for the first time have the ability to create a sovereign blockchain. You know, very quickly, you know, within minutes, without having to worry about the overhead of maintaining and creating their own consensus network with a secure validator set. Because they can effectively have shared security with the data availability layer without, and, and without losing the sovereignty of their execution layer. I think the reason why I think it's so important to kind of move towards a modular blockchain stack is because over the past 10 years, we've kind of been stuck in this kind of cycle of like layer one chains being created all the time because the previous layer one chains could not scale. And you can see this is not ending well because you know, all of the chains here have also run into performance issues and gas is and uh, tra transaction fee issues and uptime issues. So clearly, we kind of need to escape this cycle of new layer ones 
um, with something that actually kind of works. And I think the best way to do that is to have a modular blockchain stack and use technologies like rollups and ZK proofs and fraud proofs and data availability proofs. So if you want to free yourselves from the kind of limitations of monolithic layer ones, then build modular and gain your freedom. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>